Green. This is Rick Kaufman, your host with the DW Nation. Hey, guys, uh, welcome back from the 4th of July. I hope everybody had a great 4th. And um, if you're a Star Wars fan, may the 4th be with you, right? I'm sure we've heard that one before. But we're back at it. And we have pulled up here. Um, I don't know if anybody noticed um, in their uh, backyards uh, in their neighborhoods um, drownings over this 4th of July weekend or or any possible drownings now we saw any safety factors or saw things maybe taking place at their backyard pools barbecues local pools beaches on their boats why not um, we spent the weekend on the boat for the most part um, we saw one capsized um, jet ski and we saw one um and the lakes the lakes were extremely crowded boat traffic was extremely high um so obviously drinking alcohol all those other things are factors um uh, that play into all that but well let's get into here i got a couple articles i've been surfing here the internet and looking at some of the articles here um i've got my coffee and uh so let's uh, let's jump into it here. But this first one here is an article here that I saw that uh, was put out by an ABC News affiliate here. And um, uh, I believe this was in uh, North Carolina. Um, but um, they're actually talking with a uh, but with the Consumer Product Safety Commission in a report that child drownings are on the rise. Drowning, and as the, the headline of the article reads, drowning is the leading cause of unintentional death to kids ages one to four, and the pan pandemic didn't help. Um, we said, uh, most of us in this water safety community, we all said that when this pandemic, the COVID-19 started, the lockdown started, we, we said that this was going to cause a problem. Um, that you know water safety is in itself is a pandemic water safety in itself is a crisis um, you know that attacks our children that attacks um, people of color that attacks people that just don't have the access to um, you know the safety needs or education needs or learning to swim needs or what what it is that they need uh, the agency warns that the pandemic has meant kids are in the increased risk this year. Okay. Can I say, duh? I mean, w these are highly educated people, in my opinion, I guess. Uh, but um, they didn't see this coming. Uh, you can't say, you, you know, were they blindsided? You know, you shut down swim schools, you shut down places where, where people could go to learn a safety skill, a skill that will serve them the rest of their life and tell them they can't go because of some uh, COVID-19 bug or something of that nature. When the studies have shown that the chlorine in the pools, things like that, um, there, you know, it killed the bacteria or whatnot. I'm not an expert in that area. I'm just uh, just stating what I've heard. Um, it goes on here to talk a little bit about if you can get through all the freaking ads that are in these uh, in these uh, things, but it's really hard for people to access swimming lessons last year. And from what I understand this year, it still remains challenging because things have booked up pretty early, said Dr. Ben Huffman, chair of the American Academy of Pediatrics Council of Injury, Violence and Poison Prevention. Drowning is the leading cause of unintentional death. Uh, John Hopkins, All Children's Hospital in Florida, is reporting the cases of child drownings continue to increase. Year over year, we've almost doubled our drownings, unfortunately. Five skills, and it goes on and talks about five skills. Children need to be safe in the water. For children ages five and under, 83% of the drownings were at residential pools. So if you're, if you're somebody who's listening to this and you have you know, a pool in your backyard, be vigilant. Layers of protection. Go back, go to our website at thekelsgroup.com. Go back and search through some of the archives. Uh, you'll find all kinds of uh, uh, stories on um, 
layers of protection. Uh, what is shallow water blackout and how to prevent it? And then it goes on to talk about, you know, report and correction or type of what's that? I don't know what the hell that is. Why did I read that for? Who knows? Time for another drink of coffee. But anyways, and make sure that there are proper barriers, covers, alarms, and um, on and around any pool or spa your child may have access to. There's also technology. I mean, I could, we could sit here for hours and break all this down. Um, I just wanted to bring this to you, bring this to your attention. I'll make sure that there is a link posted in this to this article here. You can listen to this. Let's see. The agency warning the pandemic has meant kids are at increased risk this year. It was really hard for people to access swimming lessons last year. And from what I understand this year, it's it still remains challenging because things have booked up pretty early. Drowning is the leading cause of unintentional death of children ages one to four. Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital in St. Petersburg, Florida, reporting the cases of child drownings continue to increase. Year over year, we've almost doubled our drownings, unfortunately. For children ages five and under, 83% of drownings were at residential pools. It's every parent's worst nightmare. Last year, Emily Frisky was isolating with her family in Valley Center, California. She thought her daughter Addie was with her husband Jordan, who was working from home. She discovered Addie had actually wandered to the family pool. She was on her side. She was not breathing. Addie was without a pulse for more than 20 minutes. Emily, a former EMT, performed CPR with her husband until an... I just want to stop there. Um, I want to also just point out one thing. Um, as a parent who also lost a child to a drowning, um, parents, uh, when you think somebody's watching your child, a lot of times in the end of the day or when that something like this happens. Nobody's watching because if somebody was watching, these things wouldn't happen. They're accidents. Um, I'm not, uh, I'm not pointing fault or blame to with anybody. Um, you know, I blame myself for my daughter's accident, even though I wasn't there. Um, because as a parent, we always feel that we're responsible and that, um, you know, we could have done something different, which I'm sure we could have, but, uh, at the end of the day, uh, you'd only bring your child home. Um, we can, like I said uh, here just a few minutes ago, we can talk about this for hours and hours and hours. Uh, so check out this link. I got one other article I want to point out. This is a commentary from SoulCap. Um, I don't know if you've been seeing this in social media and on the news here. Um, it's talking about um, the ban um, is a blow for racial access, except it's in swimming. It talks about evidently in Seoul, um, uh, but, but, well, the swimming caps, as far as with the Olympics, things like that. Um, they're, they're, what, it, what it is, is uh, they're saying that uh, African-Americans, um, they're banning the uh, use of swim caps because it may give them, un, uh, I guess, uh, people of color uh, as far as uh, it gives them an un, or an edge, I guess, uh, in the competition. Um, and so people don't want them to wear them or whatever. I, I didn't really read the whole entire article. Um, it's just... Uh, this world is when, when it comes to something like this, uh, some people just don't get it. I mean, uh, you know, people of color uh, is already a phobia. So it talks about I was taught to swim in segregated uh, swimming pools because my sister and I were permitted to swim in the city pools. Therefore, if African-Americans did not have access to safe swimming environments, many times they would swim in rivers, lakes and creeks. These unsafe conditions cause many young people of color to drown. Um, the numbers of drowning amongst people of color are much higher than say the white community and other communities um, for this reason, because they just do not have the same access to everything. And it's time that we look at this and we change this. We need to change our attitude about these things and understand that, um, you know, we are all created equal and that we need to, um, I mean, just stop this stuff. I mean, it's, it's, you know, um, anyways, there's a link to this article here. Um, I don't want to get into a big debate here um, over all this. This is not what I'm here for, but you know, th this rhetoric, this kind of talk, I believe uh, only sets things back as far as water safety community, because again, 
um, as I was saying in the previous article with the pandemic and everything else that, you know, this was a setback. People did not have access to adequate swim lessons and swimming pools and facilities during the lockdown. Um, these are people that even under the good times, uh, they are locked out. They are not allowed to attend. They do not have access, just like if it was the pandemic. So stop and think about those things for a moment. And, um, you know, um, um, that's, you know, just read the article and, you know, form your own opinion on something like this. And then, you know, with that being said, guys, uh, you guys have a great Wednesday and we will check it, uh, check in here at the DW Nation, Johnny Warrior Podcast. Um, so enjoy your day. It's going to be a warm one. I know it's going to be that way here in Ohio. So uh, crank up the AC, find a cool place to go, grab a beverage, and we'll see you guys later. Have a, have a later. Thank you.